Okay, welcome back. Now in this tutorial, we're gonna show you how to take other assets on your Connect server and make them available within Connect Your Events. Um, in this example, we've created a recording. Uh, we did a, an online training with a customer. Uh, we created a recording and now we wanna make that uh, recorded webinar available as a digital asset that other people can register for and view. Now you'll see on the site, we have live upcoming events as well as on-demand events. So we're going to focus on how we make these events appear as on-demand. Now the first thing we need to do, and, and this kind of this first process, is more of a best practice more than anything. So when you create a recording, I'm going to go into my meeting uh, room folder and go to uh, Matt's training room. This is the URL that I typically use or the meeting room I typically use when I do online training with customers. If I click on the recordings link, you'll notice I've got several recordings listed here, all with uh, different customers. And I want to take these and make them available for uh, registration because I've got other customers that want to you know, learn the same activities and so I want to kind of make better use of my time and, and create more of a, a digital library of content for customers to access. So the first thing we need to do is we need to move these recordings out of the meeting room area. Right now, the, all these recordings are associated to the same meeting room, and the only way for somebody to access them really is if I were to send them this URL. If I want to allow somebody to register to see this content, this needs to be sitting in my content library. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over to Contents, and I'm going to create a new folder, and I'm going to create a folder called um, customer record or customer training. And I'm just putting these asterisks in there so that I can kind of identify it easy. It's also going to make it appear at the top of my list. If I were to click back to my main folder, it shows up right here. So it'll be easy for me to find when I'm doing these tutorials. Now the next thing I need to do is jump back over to meetings and I'm going to go to that same meeting room and once again click on recordings and so I want to send this uh, Adobe part 2 tutorial over there so I'm going to go ahead and select it by checking off this box I want to grab the uh, CYS overview for Adobe and the Bureau of Veritas training sessions so these are some customer uh, tra training recordings that I've done that I want to put into this folder so now I'm going to click on move to folder and I'm going to navigate to my customer training folder. And once I get there, I'm just going to click move. And it's going to verify that I want to send all four of these recordings over. I'm going to click OK. And now these recordings are no longer found in my meeting room, which puts it into the content library, which means I can create a registration page around it. But the other thing that this does, which is kind of a best practice, is it removes the recording from the shell of the meeting room. So if I were to ever delete this meeting room, it would consequently delete all the recordings that reside in it. So by moving the recordings out of the meeting room area, uh, I have a better chance or it's, uh, it's kind of a best practice in order to preserve those recordings even if I were to uh, dispose of that room. So the next thing I need to do is I'm going to create an event. I'm going to jump over to event management and I'm going to click new event. And we're going to call this uh, customer training part one. I don't need to worry about a URL. Um, I'm not going to worry too much about event information. This is just a demonstration, but we might just say, um, you know, connect your sales team training. And then in our detailed information, we might say, you know, during this recorded training session, you will learn and I'm not going to type everything out. Uh, we could go on to put in a lot of details about who this was intended for and um, what they'll learn during the, uh, the training and all that good stuff. But for now, I'm just going to uh, leave it blank for the sake of demonstration. Now, I want my event to start today. And since this is going to be on-demand material, I, don't, it's my, my, I need to be more concerned with the end time. So I want this to be available for the next year. So I'm just going to push this out one year, and my content will end at 10:15 uh, um, on July 22nd of 2012. I'm not going to worry about adding an event logo, but down here, rather than picking a live meeting, I'm going to go ahead and choose 
some content from my Adobe Connect library. Then I'm going to click Next. From here, I need to navigate to my customer training folder. And I'm going to choose this uh, CYS overview for Adobe. I'm going to click Next. Uh, the information I want to collect on people, I'd like to know the name um, of their company. I'd like to know the city and state that they're coming from. Uh, we're going to be using this as kind of as a lead generation tool. So I'll use uh, city, state, and zip as a way of uh, kind of assigning workflow rules for who will receive leads when they are come into the system. And then I want to grab their direct phone number. I'm going to go ahead and click uh, Next. I'm not going to worry about uh, reordering these fields. That's fine for right now. We'll click Next. And uh, again, I don't need to worry about this step because I'm not going to use the system for uh, sending out emails. Uh, we'll make this a part of our campaign, which we'll use our marketing automation tool for. So I'm not going to use uh, this particular step. So let's uh, scroll down, click Next. And when it comes to on-demand content, I don't need to worry about sending out invitations. Uh, I don't need to worry about uh, putting people into a pending approval mode. I do need to notify them once they are approved for the event. And that's really the only email that I'm going to need. I am going to go ahead and customize this and simply deselect the Outlook calendar invite. Um, when you're doing on-demand content, this is something they can access any time. Uh, by default, Adobe wants to attach an iCal attachment, which will kind of put this uh, event into their calendar. Well, since this is set up for a year, I don't want to block off somebody's calendar for an entire year. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Save, and then hit Finish, and then we're going to Publish. And once our event is published, we can now jump over to the Connect Your Events site. Uh, remember, this is our kind of branded portal for where we organize all of our events. It becomes our storefront for Adobe events. I'm going to go up to uh, my name where it says Signed In as Matt. I'm going to go to Account Setup and go to Event Assignments. Now, there's two things that I need to do in order to get this material to appear in our storefront. First, I want it to appear as on demand. You'll notice in my list that some of my events have on demand next to them. So if I come down here, I should be able to find my uh, customer training part one. Right now it's unassigned, which means it's not assigned to a group or a category, so it's not going to appear on the site. But if I click the little edit button here, there's a little uh, checkbox that says on demand. By checking this, it's going to put this on demand label on it, which will allow the content to appear with an expiration date as opposed to a due date. The other thing I need to do is have my content assigned to a category. Now I want to create a new category, so I'm going to jump over here to manage categories, and I'm going to call it customer training. And I'm just going to assign this uh, nice basic color, maybe this nice yellowish orange color. Hit create. And I'm going to bring this down and make it a part of my recorded webinars. So I'm going to just drag and drop and make it a subcategory of recorded webinars and hit save. And jump back over to event assignments. And if I scroll down, here's my customer training. I just want to come down and drop that label onto the customer training part one. And now if I jump out to the public site, we'll see that uh, customer training part one has just been added to the site under recently added. It is listed as on demand and it's showing as July 22nd of 2012 being the uh, expiration date or you know available until. So that is how we take a recording and move it from our meeting room, put it into a content folder so that we can have better control and management of it, and then create a registration page around that and then assign it as an on-demand piece of material inside of Connect Your Events. So I hope you found this helpful, and we will see you in the uh, next tutorial. Thanks a lot.